Hello, and welcome to episode nine of Pappy Hour. I'm here with my host, the wonderful Jessica Earnshaw, episode, my lovely daughter. Episode nine. Episode nine, and it is uh, 2024. So, uh, big uh, ha- Merry Christmas. Hope everybody had a great holiday season and a very happy new year. Uh, and we're in 2024. Well, wow. Officially my 55th year on this planet. Going to be 55 this year. So it's cool. Wow. Right, I'm halfway. I'm going to live to be 110. So I figure I'm halfway there. Halfway? Halfway. Okay. You're going to live to be like 150. So hopefully. Yeah. So yeah. You're like not even a quarter of your life. Yeah. Well, we took a week off for Christmas. Hope everyone had a good Christmas. Um, and yeah, here we are starting off the year strong. Episode nine. Episode nine. And we're going to pick back up with a really cool little slice of uh, American history, California history. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the Donner Party. Ooh. So everybody from the Bay Area <laughs> knows about the Donner Party. Anyone probably in the country because it was always touched upon on some form of U.S. history, whether third grade, sixth grade, eighth grade, wherever you heard about the Donner Party. Mm -hmm. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of the fame from the Donner Party came from... The fact that they ate each other. They had to nibble on each other a little bit. But we're going to try to... um, We're going to try to not dwell on that because I feel that takes away from the real... You know, really, it was a it, it was a tragedy. I mean, they it was a, it was a tragedy. It's called regarded as one of the most fascinating tragedies tragedies in American history. Yes, and and, it, and and a lot of people think it just was like kind of a short little bit, like oh, they yeah. were stuck up in the snow for a couple of weeks and they had to nibble on each other. No, it they, was nine year nine months of yeah. It was from May oh. until February. Yeah, and that and that was if you survived. And that was If You Survived. So Yeah. And so I read this book right here, which is called The Indifferent Indifferent Stars Above. Shout out Daniel James Brown, um, The Harrowing Saga of the Donner Party. I read this a couple months ago and could not put it down. It was one of the best books I've read. It is an account, a historical fiction account, really, you know, mirrors the the, the author. It's historical fiction? Meaning that it follows the life of one of the Donner parties like it's through her eyes. and like. But it almost, wasn't written by her. No, but it was written by this author who went and did all the research, explored all the sites, gotcha. walked through the salt flats to get a, to know how to write about them. Gotcha. Almost as a fictional story. Yeah. As an, It's like a novel, but it's all historically accurate and exactly where they went, exactly who died when. And he wrote out, you know, what that would look like as a story. Yeah. So, I mean, this is cool I, because how have they not made a movie out of the Donner? I mean, have they? There we go. We need to get our extraordinary new one, our, our producer extraordinaire, Tristan Foster, yeah. to start writing a, a, a script for a, a film, a screenplay based off this um, book because based on the Donner Party. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so this is one of the best books. I want to be the Donner guy because he, he gets the gangrene, his, he gets gangrene in his arm. And, uh, oh, you, uh, you want to be in the movie? No, I want to be Reed because he survives and he. But he, he was like 5'5. Five, five. Oh, I'm way too tall for a 5'5. Five, five. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was little. But okay. So getting back to this this author, he's almost like a reenactor. So he reenacted yeah. the Donner Party. That's of what's their cool sagas. about w- w- this author is that, yeah, he like went through, you know, a- and the same times of the year that they were there. So he kind of walked through yeah. Truckee in the winter and was like, yeah, no, these yeah. are the sight smells. Yeah. Um, temperature. And people um always say, Well, why didn't the Donner Party they were in Truckee? Why didn't they just, you know, walk to Tahoe or walk down to Sacramento? I mean, it was only, you know, Truckee to Sacramento's less than a hundred miles. Um, you know, they could have done they could have done that in, you know, three or four days and built a sled and all these things. And it's like when you're when you're not prepared for snow and you're in fifteen to twenty feet of snow. You can't go anywhere. You you are literally stuck in a cabin, in a tent, yeah. in in a very small area. And their hardest hurdle, which was passing the Sierra Nevada in the dead of winter, came at the very end of their journey. So they had already walked from the Illinois River yeah. in Illinois, left for Missouri, and they were wiped walked out. through se- you know six five six states, yeah, and had lost a majority of their party already. 
Well, they didn't lose a majority. Let, let, let's let's talk the numbers of the Donner Party. Okay, we'll lost talk a lot stats. of them. So they they started in Springfield, Illinois, and uh, they, well, that's where the Donners came that's, from. That's where the Donners. But they all assembled in, in a place outside of Kansas City, Missouri, uh, right on the Kansas border, on the the border of Western Missouri and Eastern Kansas, and it's the little town of Independence. And it's right now a suburb of the big Kansas City, uh, but that's where the that's basically the starting point of the Oregon Trail. Yeah, so, that's where they would all congregate from their surrounding. Yeah, get supplied up, get your wagon in order, mm -hmm. make sure you bought your all your livestock. Group up, join yep. a group, join a group, and and they left um, during that year. I, I I put some stats about just how about the also well, um, one of the big things about why. They kind of got off to a rocky start was they, they got delayed and they left later in the season than they should have. Yes. By the time they reached the Sierra Nevada, it was already way too close to winter. Yeah, They should have left the beginning of April. First of all, they left from Independence. They were in the, the tail end, the very tail end of 500, 500 wagons leaving. In their one group? It, no. And that's everybody. Band. Everybody left together. So like picture it this way. Oh, you in got, the season. Yeah. You got one crack at it, right? So you don't go, hey, I think we'll leave in August or maybe September, October. You got to leave in, you know, March. It's still snowing across the plains. I mean, look at plain weather. Kansas could have a, a snowstorm in April. Mm -hmm. So your window to leave was was rather small. It is basically, you know, the last couple of weeks of, you know, last couple of weeks of April, maybe the first couple of weeks of May. But the Donners left on May 12th and they were the last ones out of Independence. They were in the back of the 500 wagons. Yeah. It says in the book why they were delayed. S something to do with some supplies or they had a broken down something and needed to get another something in time. Yeah. But things just didn't bad happen. luck. I mean, yeah, you can't just get things. Yeah. Things didn't happen fast then. So they were, they were late out of the gate, late out of the gate. Mm -hmm. And here it is, May 12th. And you think, okay, May 12th. So the Donners weren't going to the, the Oregon Trail. Uh, is 2,170 miles, 2,170 miles from Independence to basically Portland, Oregon. It was either the Dales or somewhere along the Columbia River, but mm -hmm. we can call it modern day Portland, Oregon. So Kansas City to Portland, 2,170 miles, okay? So right now, if you're driving from Kansas City to Portland, I can do that, I can do that standing easy in two days. 1,000 miles a day, 2,100 miles, we could be from Kansas City to Portland, two days, uh, you know, unless you were doing it in the middle of the winter. So and they went in 1846. How many years ago was that? They went 18, 177 years ago. In 177 years, it went from taking six months to well, two days, seven months uh, to two days. Now, it took you two days. I mean, how long is it going to take in another 177 years? At two minutes. Yeah. Because you just fly, you just transport yep. yourself. <laughs> yeah. Chip. Okay, so they, they left, so 2,170 miles. So just to put that in perspective of how long that takes, okay? If you were to, if you were to take, if that was, they said it was a four to six month journey, okay? To get there, 2,170 miles. If, if, you, if it took you four months, you were doing 18 miles a day. Five months? 14 miles a day and six months of 12 miles a day. Almost, yeah, it's like 12, 15, 18 miles a day. And that right? feels so doable if you were just walking. Yeah. Or, you know, a slow jog. So 12 miles but a day. In a wagon every day. when you wake up and have to make a full breakfast and pack up camp every single morning. Yeah. That's hard to put in consistently. You know, just long travel days. Like, so I can't days. imagine how tough that was. And you're probably going about three miles an hour. In a on, wagon. On, on a wagon. Maybe even, like, two miles an hour on a lot of parts And everything going was, was pulled by ox. And some people had, like, miscellaneous horses around. But yeah. mostly things were pulled by their ox. Pulled by their ox. And then they also brought uh, a supply of cattle. Yeah. Um, they had mules. Mules were really good. Mm -hmm. um, the mules were, uh, they were, of all the animals, just uh, to get to the end of the story of one thing, because this is brought up right now, but the animals, 
So they had all their ox, all their cattle to eat, all their horses. They, they, they had over probably from the way they talk about losses, I'm going to, I'm going to gather they had over 200 animals, 200 hoofed animals when they left, you know, it got to Sacramento to Sutter's uh, fort, three mules, nine months later, only mules, three mules. You fact checking me? Yeah. I'm trying to see how much cattle they had. How many cattle did they, uh, they, you know, probably, they, probably like a hundred head or something. They had, they had lost nearly a hundred. Going across the plains. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They all. So they must have had. They had a lot, but three mules made it in. Um, okay. Some other, yeah. just some other interesting facts to throw that out there because people are probably thinking, well, all right, 500 wagons left from Independence, Missouri on the Oregon Trail, right? It wasn't like. Um, thousands of people were sitting in Independence, going, "Hey, um, you take the Oregon Trail. I'm going to take the, uh, I'm going to take Route 66, and you guys are going to go this route." There was one route. It was <laughs> the Oregon Trail, and then uh, a, near a place called Fort Laramie in Wyoming, you either peeled off to the California Trail to the south, to the south, and then that that would put you through Salt Lake across the Great Plains, and then over the Sierras. And that was a really rough route because you went over the brutal Sierras, which. We I mean, also went through the dry, super reflective salt plains. They yeah, said that. The, great, the big, ba the Great Basin. Yeah. They said that, um, you know, not having any sunglasses or ways to protect their eyes. They were all, they were all blind. They were all like really struggling with their eyesight. They yeah. said it. And it that happened to headaches. them in the snow. That happened to them in the snow yep. when they were trying to rescue themselves out and go for little things. Um, the snow was just so blinding because there was no sunglasses in those days, yep. and they didn't know what the uh, what, that what did the Alaskans uh, indigenous people knew. The Aleutians. I'm not quite sure. Okay. What do they do? They have the um, slit glasses. Well, yeah, right? no, they would they would t they would put a hide, and you would put two little slits in the hide, and then you would tie it around your eyes, so it would it would uh, allow enough vision out where you could at least see where you're going without all the glare. But it, well, it would reduce let's say 80% of that sunlight from your eyes. Of the UV. Yeah, I have a cool um, quote about that that I uh, jotted down from the book here about the UV light. Yeah. Okay, pull that up. I'm going to talk about immigration Whoa. because this is now before, okay, this is leading up. Wait, wait. Okay, I got it. Right. So under normal circumstances at sea level, the eye can absorb UVB rays without damage. But with every thousand feet in elevation gain, the strength of the ultraviolet rays increases by 5%. So at the elevation of Donner Lake, the rays were approximately 30% stronger than at sea level. Yeah, Donner Lake's 6,000 uh, feet above sea level. Are the salt flats high? The Great Basin, I think, is about 2,000 feet. Okay. I mean, it's not close to sea level. It, but it's, it's all white. It's a plateau, but it's all white, and it, yeah. was super, it was super wet. And when they were going across that, what would happen was the wagons would— um, so there was so much salt— that the water underneath would make the salt flats kind of moist. They'd make them wet and they would make it swampy. So the wet, the wheels of the wagons would actually sink in sometimes up at like half of a wheel sunk in and they'd have to dig them out and start again. So painstaking. I mean, there's probably hours where they didn't even make a mile. So this Very was, slow. let's rewind to, let's just kind of try to go through their journey chronologically and we'll talk about, uh, you know, what they encountered at each place. So they started in Okay, so I'm going to throw this out real quick. So they started in, they left May 12th, uh, 1846. Mm -hmm. They were, there was 1,500 people that went along the Oregon Trail. That's it. There was no train. There were no planes. There were no river canals. There were no boats. So 1,500 people immigrated from East Coast, we'll call it, of the United States. I mean, yeah, it was the Midwest in the, in the in the Midwest to the West Coast. Now that wasn't including what came around the Horn on ships, but that was a really long journey. Um, so probably the bulk of of the immigrants came aboard a and ship. And this was 1846. 1846. Dad, so only question 1, for you. Hundred people. Question for you. Yeah. If you were offered, you get to go there by boat. Or by Oregon Trail, what would you choose? Um, you know, trying to put myself in 1846 shoes, I would say by ship because I feel a ship was safer because the indigenous people 
Uh, what about AKA, pirates? AKA the Indians. Well, I mean, pi yeah, pirates were a threat, but I'm just looking at the odds. How long would it take on boat versus? How long did it take from Boston to San Francisco Tristan? in 1846? That might be a uh, question for our producer. Up. So from ship, from Boston to New York City. Because if it's about the same, City, I think I might pick boat too, just because it, I feel like it'd be cool to be on. I'd rather be on a boat than a wagon. Yeah, boats were rough in those but, days too. I mean, a ship was no, it was not. You could go down and that's it. You're done. Well. Something goes or, wrong with your boat. Or, and, or it's easy to get sick because yeah. um, of lack of fresh water, lack of fresh food. Yeah. Um, you know, it's no Princess Cruise, um, you know, going through know, the canal, boat... heading up the car the uh, New York to San Francisco, 1846 on a ship. Those were sail ships. That was before steamships. Around the horn. Over okay. So three months. Three months. All right. So now, I might take ship then. Now that's halfway across the country. You know, Kansas City, Missouri, smack dab in the middle, right? Yeah. So now you're 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 going halfway across the country in double in the time. Four to six months. So we'll call the average five months. And in this case it was longer, so six months, versus getting on a ship and making it in three months. And you cover the entire country. And you go from New York. So I don't but know. If you're in Springfield, Illinois, it's really hard. I guess you would have went down the Mississippi, you would have left from uh, New Orleans, yeah. and you would take that same route. So it was probably a little bit shorter, maybe two and I a half I think I might have picked Covered Wagon because now just thinking of sailing through the Bahamas, like in all the st crazy storms. Yeah, like, if you look at it. I would way left... rather be on land in a storm than sea up when, when is, a storm. When is the Atlantic hurricane season? It's usually in the fall, right? It's Yeah, it's June 1st to uh, yeah. November 30th. So it's in most but of the hurricanes, never, there's are, a, could be a storm any day of the year in the yeah, ocean. Yeah, but the hurricanes are historically August, September, and then they kind of taper off in October. So you'd have to get you, you would have to get out of the Caribbean. Uh, yeah, you know. By All right, final answer, covered wagon. What about you? Covered wagon. Right. Yeah, I go covered <laughs> wagon, marching in there with a rifle and. Uh, At least Civil you can War see days. so much land. You know, it's like more sea. Cool. So you know why they all wanted to go to Oregon? You know what they were giving away in the Oregon Territory in 1846? Land. They were giving away land. How much of it? As much as you could see. Nope. One section. Oh. For a couple. So, a section is a so six by six township. Me and mom were going across. Thanks. We'd get uh, 640 acres. One section of land. Yeah. And a township is six by six. A, a township is. So uh, 36 is... townships is a section. Something like that. Okay. Or a section is a township. Um, I think it's by factors of six. Six hundred and forty acres is a square mile. Yeah, one mile by one mile. Forty-three thousand five hundred and sixty square feet is an acre. Times that by square that. It's a lot. So six hundred forty acres is a lot of land. Mm -hmm. And if you were single, you'd get three hundred twenty acres. Yeah, so three hundred twenty acres. Everyone for a was single coupling guy. up. So I mean, three hundred twenty acres. That's a good little homestead to start uh, growing some. Barley and yeah, and these people laying down some roots. But what's interesting about these people who came over, the gold rush had not yet started, which was soon on the horizon. So they were coming over mm. for land. They didn't know about the gold and gold, not gold purposes. So they didn't really know what they were in for, and that they were about to strike gold, quite literally. Quick but shout okay. out to Sierra Nevada. Hope everybody at Sierra Nevada had a very merry Christmas <laughs> and a happy New Year. Sponsor us, please. Okay, 1846, 1,500 people leave. They leave Independence. Where do they go? They're going to St. Joe, Missouri. Is that their second stop? No, they didn't go to St. Joe was north of that. They went right into Kansas, and they started on, basically they followed Highway 80 a lot of the way, but they went up through Kansas, mm -hmm. uh, probably about half, half to three quarters of the state of Kansas. Uh, went up to Nebraska, got along the Platte River in Nebraska, uh, went so through Nebraska, went, up, went over the plains, went into Wyoming, and that's where Fort Laramie is. Mm -hmm. And that's where I believe they peeled off to the California Trail. So let's explain why they peeled off to the California Trail and why didn't they go with the majority of the folk over into Oregon? So usually people would continue north and go over to Oregon. Well, hold on, hold on. 
there, there's two ways to get to the California Trail. So they didn't take the historic route of the California Trail. To go up and down. They took the new Hastings route. Yeah, and Hastings, okay? so I remember this from the book, his name was Lansing Hastings. Yep. And he was, you know, a trail finder, a cowboy, uh, uh, this and that back then, and founded this new route. And wanted people to take it for because, whatever. Because along the route, he had what? He had a supply place. So he wanted people to be on his route so he could sell them supplies. So for own personal reasons, he wanted to send people through this new route, mm -hmm. which was unfortunately treacherous for most of the Donning, Donner and Reed party. Yeah, let me tell you why it was a little harder. And, and he had said crossing the Sierras was no problem. Um, he said the biggest problem was, yeah, you got a little bit of Great Plains to cross. He said it was maybe one to two days. It took them six days to cross that. Yeah. Um, when but you when went he... on the Oregon Trail, you had, okay, so what, what's the number one basic thing? You know, when there's not a 7-Eleven in sight, there's no suppliers. Salt. No, no. You, you need absolutely one thing to survive. Water. Water. Okay. So water is your number one. Food is your number two. And then... Things go down the line of, you know, safety and, and shelter and yeah, being able to, you know, feed your livestock. So, so water's number one. So going from the Great Salt Lake practically to Reno, Nevada. Okay. That's a big area. Anybody who's ever driven Highway 80, you, you leave Reno, you leave Sparks. It is desert until you come up, you roll up on Salt Lake. So that's a long haul of desert. And that is, um, that's at least... 500 miles of just brutality from the time you get out of the What's mountains. What's the landscape like? It's just flat. And there's no there's no streams. There's no water. There's no... It's desert. Yeah. And there's no greenery. So what happens is um, livestock soaks up... When they eat grass, they soak up some water. So by feeding live, by livestock eating uh, grass... They're also drinking they're, technically. They're, they're getting some... They're, yeah, they're getting, they're getting a little bit of water in them. Um, so they can be kept alive a little longer. So if you have no grass and no water, it, livestock don't last long. And what happened was when the livestock would, uh, it was hard for them to corral them at night because they're trying to survive. They, they're, they, gotta, they, they're running to go find yeah, something. They're not a Labrador. Listen, to stay close to me and I'll feed you. They're just, they're literally trying to survive. So they're going to go and, and they, they smell and they, they know what direction the water is. They just don't know if it's, you know, it's, is it three miles or five miles or 25 miles? So they leave. So they lost, they kept losing all their livestock. Mm -hmm. And then the Poulet Indians, um, Poulet Indians, I believe that was um, the Indian tribe. It starts with a P, uh, but that was uh, one of the, the Indian tribes in the Great Basin. And, you know, here comes this band of of people with all these livestock and, and, and food's hard to get. I'm, I'm taking your cows. They're wandering yeah. away. And so they lost a lot of their livestock uh, to the Indians, um, which rightfully so. They were trespassing across their their land. And uh, so they, they took took their livestock. Um, you know, they just weren't they, they weren't able to manage themselves on such a treacherous route. Yeah, it was a brand new route that they didn't really have. Um yeah, talk about how many people. They were so, like the first ones. Yeah. So there was 87 people in Donner Party. So they were one of the first years. I mean, okay, going back, looking at looking at immigration, I mean, 1846, another event was going on that made it, um, was probably one of the reasons most of the immigrants were going to Oregon and not to California because the Mexican-American War was going on in 1846. The Washoe Indians um, approached them in, in like Tahoe, it yeah, seems. Yeah, yeah. Washoe Indians are around Tahoe and Truckee. Okay. But they, they experienced a lot of, uh, you know, different tribes on the way. Um, Two of their Indian guides were killed by the party in Eaton. Uh, yes. They killed two of their Indian guides. Well, those weren't Indian guides. So those two guides were sent to them back um, those two guys, they, they were named like Lewis and, wasn't well, not Lewis and Clark, but, um, oh, I, I didn't write that down, but yes, 
too many guides. And they made it almost to the end. And yeah, they were some of the. And, and no. And then um, one of the guys, one of the survivors uh, shot the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Right when they were right when they were just right outside of Sacramento. So that was. Yeah. They got into like a, some sort of thing. Well, they got they got they left them because they one of the party. This is a different sub party. We'll talk about that in, in a sec. So what, what that that's a different a party that tried to uh, walk down. So much drama on this Sacramento. in this story. Okay, I just want to talk how many people left because this this really is a perspective of, of okay, there's eighty seven people in the Donner Party. In eighteen forty two, a hundred people went on the Oregon Trail. All year. One hundred. hundred people. Sit sit at a mall and a hundred people cross you in three minutes and a hundred people left on that Oregon Trail. Now in eighteen forty three because it started to get talked about that the Oregon Trail, a thousand people left. 1844, 1500. 1845, 3000. So it's growing that people are getting to Oregon. Now, 1846 slowed down because of what? Don't tell me. The war was going on, the Mexican American oh. War. So 1846, big numbers aren't leaving. So only That's about what I was gonna say. 1500 left the year the Donner Party left, all right? Now, is this because the Mexican-American War, you know, remember, things things took months to get back east of information-wise. Yeah. So by the time the Mexican-American War was well talked about back east, it was well into maybe 1847, only 450 people went on the Oregon Trail that year. In 1847? Yeah. And in, in, in 18... Uh, 48, it was about the same. It was about 400. 1849, like 400. Well, what happened in 1849? Gold rush. January, Sutter's Mill, not Sutter's Fort, but Sutter's Mill, a little higher up. It's, it's right outside of, uh, it's halfway between Auburn and Placerville on the American River. Mm -hmm. It's a little place called Sutter's Mill. And that's when John Sutter discovered gold. And and that was January of 1849. Well, if 49ers. he discovered 49ers, if if he discovered gold in January of 49, it didn't get back to make thousands of people leave in the spring of 1849. Everybody, if you were leaving in April of 49, you'd already made up your mind in January. You were you were getting goods ready, you were getting ready for the trip, right? Now, when's the next time you're gonna leave to come overland? 1850. 1850. All right, now you had a year and three months to get ready. How many people made the trip in, in 1850? 5,000? 25,000. Wow. 25,000. Now, that's not including everybody that was coming by ship. That's, that's from 400 in 1849 to 25,000 the next Word year. Word got out. Yeah. So now that trail got pounded, right? Yeah. And because 25,000. So it was a good trail. Now, after that, it was wide open because 25,000 coming across. Now, in 1851, I don't have the stats for 1851. It slowed a little bit, but now there were so many supply places in between. So if you wanted to make money and you were kind of done, that's what you did. You were, became a supplier. Mm -hmm. And then how goods got a moved retailer. out. Now, I'm gonna, I don't want to really go live in California, but I want to make money. So I'm going to go from independence and I'm going to go just to Fort Laramie and I'm going to take six wagons, chock full of stuff. And I'm not going to have a wife with me. I'm not going to have six kids with me. I'm not going to try to have a, a trunk full of, uh, of clothes and books. All I'm bringing are knives and dry goods and bacon. flour and bacon and sugar and kerosene and all those things, right? I'm going to drive those six wagons and I'm going to drop two off. After a few hundred miles, and I'm going to drop two empty, right? So it slowly was the chain. You know, you talk about a chain of a supply chain. It literally was a supply chain. That's where the word supply chain came from. So supply chain, it goes from stop to stop to stop. So because of that, and then someone would go a little further and, yeah. and make their store. So now those 2,170 miles between Independence and Portland, Oregon were very well supplied and and to sacramento california right so now and allowed more people to come through and it just was easier cycled. right there was probably um 
when the Donners got to Truckee, there was nothing in Truckee. And I bet nope. by 1851, 52, there were now places in Truckee that you could buy something. Hole up at, at least. Yeah. So those stats, yeah. those historic stats. Very interesting. Give you a a real look at, uh, you know, how how that immigration pattern was and how fast that happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is all overland travel. This, all, all these statistics, right, um, are all valid, right? And, and it's, um, so from, from 19, okay, the, the Oregon Trail from Independence to Portland, they said about 400,000 people made that trip. Over the course between the 1880s. Between about 1835 and 1869. Okay, so 1835, I started the stats at about 42. So 1835, there were a few hundred people, a few hundred. So 1850, now it's on. So from 1850. Those two decades. To 1850 to 1869. So 20 years, 400,000 people came across the Oregon Trail. Mm -hmm. So you can chalk that up as, you know, how many went to California Trail, how many went to Oregon, but 400,000 people. All right. Why they, did no one go through the desert? Why did anybody take the Southern Trail? So that was a lot I of think, Amer Native American tribes. I think tribe. there were a lot and more, more aggressive Mexican. tribes. And it was Mexican territory. Yeah. So the American, in the Louisiana Purchase of 1803, uh, and by the way, it was purchased by the brilliant Thomas Jefferson for a whopping sum of $15 million. It's <laughs> crazy. Was all the land following the Missouri River. So that's why that Oregon Trail kind of went north because it was territory that the U.S. actually owned. It was not Part Spanish the... territory or Mexican territory. Yeah, so um, that's why they stayed up there. You know, before 1820... 1820 was when Mexico granted their independence from Spain. So before 1820, it was all Spanish land. From 1820 to 1850, it was Mexican land. And from 1850 to current day, it's U.S. land. So there's been three different sovereign nations that all claim land that really belong to different tribes of Indians. And they, yeah, you know, so, went back and forth on the land as well. Yeah, we were at Lansing Hastings. Okay, so Lansing Hastings um, convinced them to take the pass. No, no, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt you real quick because 1869 is a very important day. Why people stopped coming on the Oregon Trail? 1869. What happened in 1869 that uh, that it didn't you didn't have to take off in a wagon anymore? A train. Exactly. Ooh. The Transcontinental Railroad was complete when who drove the spike? Sorry, just um, go go Cardinals, go Cardinals. Leland huh? Stanford. Oh, okay. Leland Stanford. I was I, thinking Arizona. I apologize. You know, she was a business major, not a history major. I can't, I can't always think I'm she's on top pull of it. All right, names out of everything, but 1869. So Leland Stanford of Stanford University drove the the, the railroad spike. Well, that was Stanford University was named after him. He wasn't going to Stanford University. Obviously, I understand that part. <laughs> He went out to Promontory Point outside of Salt Lake City, Utah, drove the Golden Spike and connected the Transcontinental Railroad that now went from San Francisco to Kansas City. Wow. I, it went somewhere in the Midwest. I don't know. So exactly it had where. been built from yep. either direction and then it met in the middle? Yep. So they built it, built it. That's now, cool. Can you imagine the Donners going across the Great Plains, just, just trucking across it? There were people working there building a railroad across it. Now that was a feat. And this was yeah. only, this was started in like the mid 1860s. This was started after the Civil War. So from 1865, it took them four years to get from San Francisco to Salt Lake City. They were slowly building it the other way. And they had a lot of small lines on the other way, but it was getting over the Sierras. So, you know, when you drive Highway 80, it's hard uh, enough just walking them and build, building a train through it. Yeah. And you know, when you look up over Donner Lake, yeah. you see the, the train go through the mountain. Oh, there. yeah. That's yeah, it. That's the line. They built it. They built it right, right up. It goes right out of Sacramento, goes through Auburn. It goes right up Parallels Highway 80. Does it still run? 
Yeah, that's how you, if you're going to take the train across country, that's how you take it. Dad, you should do that. That would be a podcast. We could do live podcasts on the Transcontinental Railroad. <laughs> Van. What would we do, west to east or east to west? Um, I think I would want to go, I would want to start in the east and and yeah, trace imagine it. I'm tracing the roots of you're only allowed to My. eat bacon, biscuits, and butter. That's what they had on the trail. Wouldn't be a problem for you. Bacon, biscuits, and <laughs> butter. Um, yeah, I could yeah. survive. Could we sneak uh, a yeah. bit of beer in there? I mean, oh, I'm sure they had beer. Do they have some ale? Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Not a, I'm not a whiskey drinker, so I can't drink. Uh, yeah. I can't bring a bottle. It, it's very hard to transport beer overland, so I'm sure they didn't drink much beer. No. But ale did stay good longer than water, so yeah, they might have. They got to brew it when they got to Sierra Nevada. Okay, so 1869, we got a railroad. So now anybody with money is like, okay, do I go buy a 100 head of cattle? Do I hire a wagon master? Do I pack this wagon and then maybe? Or do I buy four plane, train tickets and pack your bags on there and take the train across? Yeah, but then you don't get to bring anything with you. Sure you do. Not you, cattle you, or a, a, tr a wagon or the, a house. They weren't, they weren't bringing cattle so they could bring cattle there. They were bringing cattle so they had food on the road. Oh, okay. So they didn't starve to death. That makes sense. If if the Donner Party like showed up in Truckee Meadows with a hundred head of cattle healthy, they wouldn't have had to nibble on each other. Stop their, saying this word nibble. <laughs> I don't, I don't like, like it. I don't like the word to consume another human being. How about just just okay? they ate each other? That's well, what it was. They, I mean, you know, it nibble. Okay, I don't want to talk about. It. Um, all right, we're gonna talk. We're gonna go into Hastings. Oh, we're talking so about it. We're going to Hastings. So Hastings kind of was. He would send he would send people out on horseback and go deliver notes to pe to different camps and parties and saying I have a better route, come here yes. and and find me here. So that's what they did. They yeah. received his letter and he said they were going to shave a hundred miles off the trip, but it really added like three hundred miles. Yeah, it, it added, added more. Yeah, it was a zigzag crazy. Well, and trail. they would have just boulders the size of semis that they would have to drag their stuff over and bushes, and there was no trail. It was just yeah wilderness that they were trudging through with all of their stuff and all their cattle yeah. and people just were dropping like flies at that point yeah so if they the Donners finally stayed on the original california trail they would have been a month ahead and in that month time they would have got over the sears well the people who split off from them and said no we're not listening to this hastings guy they all we're got going there. the other route they got there they all got there yeah yeah and uh Remember, when they got stranded, it was uh, November 4th. Dang. It was November 4th, and it snowed. So they, they were told the snow really didn't hit till the middle to end of November. Well. No one knew then. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't even know now. 2023, oh, yeah. we're not sure if it snows tomorrow, and then all of a sudden it doesn't snow tomorrow, then it dumps eight inches. I mean, it just the weather of all of everything we know about. Weather does what it wants. Weather does what it wants. So back then, you just... It was a crapshoot. All you could do is give history. And how much history did they have? Yeah, they didn't know big They didn't have a lot of history. Coming. They had five years of history. Well, we know now that the last winter where the top of Donner Summer Summit received over 500 inches was, they said, like over a 100-year storm. That was yeah. a 100-year average. From last year. From last year. It was a 100-year storm. So it was a lot like what happened in 1846. Yeah. So not only did they leave late, well, they left late. So that meant that, um, you know, they were coming into Tahoe and Later. they were met with an early winter. Yes. So a the Hastings route, we don't have to talk about him too much, but he, he, he was a timeshare guy and he sold them a bad bill of goods and um, they listened to him and they shouldn't have. Um, and it, and it cost them like another month, right? Back then, you just have no, you just don't know. You just go with your gut. And also, um, they didn't start losing. They didn't start losing people till they got to through the Great Basin. That's when they started having yeah. people die. Um, and they only had lost what three people up until yeah, they were pretty good for a while. Yeah, I think they only had three deaths to the time they got um, to uh, in, almost to Truckee. Mm -hmm. um, when they left Reno, which is kind of leaving the last of the Great Basin. It's about 50, it's about 40 miles up to Truckee. Yeah, um, so they depending went. Depending on where you're leaving from. But yeah, for, for, let's say 40 to 50 miles up to Truckee. It's only less than 100 miles from Truckee to Sutter's 
yeah. fort. Which was their final destination. So yeah. basically standing in between them. 170 miles. Now that's to Portland. So uh, it's a little bit shorter. So we're going to call it like 1,800 miles. They had gone 1,700 miles and they came up under 100 miles short. Yeah. But what was between them? Massive Sierra Nevada mountain. Well, it, they, it was the down slope. So they had already gone up the eastern slope from Reno, all right, and to Truckee is halfway up. They were only three, Donner Lake sits three miles from the summit. So all they had to do is hike three more miles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you drive, every time you drive the Tahoe, you go over Donner Pass. Donner Pass, all right? It, it, immigrant Gret Gap, all, all that, right? You're up at the top. So it's a lot easier going downhill than it is going uphill. So they were three miles. From the summit. Yeah. So if they just had like another two weeks, they could have got their three miles up there and then started heading down. Yeah. And, you know, making 10 or 15 miles a day, shoot, five, four, five, six days, you're in Auburn where it's kind of stopped snowing. So yeah. they were, they were, I would say on a, on a very fair estimate, they were two weeks away from making their journey um, when it started to snow. Now, let's get in when it started to snow. I have a, had a good quote. Okay. It started snowing. Ready? It was November. It was early. So it was, um, they said it was, uh, they said it was going to snow early November and it started snowing. I didn't write it down, but I believe it was November 4th. But it yeah. snowed. Well, they got trapped by like a multi-day blizzard storm. So it's not like it just rain snowed a little bit. Like it dumped and then all of a sudden winter was on. You know, it was deep. And if I remember correctly, they rolled up to Donner Lake and they were still divided into like three main groups. So yeah, one the, group. There were the Reeds. Found. There were the Donners. One group found an abandoned cabin and stayed there. Yep. And they were kind of isolated from the rest. And then the two others built their own cabins, mm -hmm. but built them as like a pit. Yeah. So they were kind of in the snow. Yeah. And um, and they use hides for the roof. Yeah. So anybody ox. who's who's been up in the Sierras and been skiing, what would happen if you pulled, you know, a tent, built a log cabin around, and then you just put a tent over it and it snowed 10 feet? Yeah. It collapses. So they were constantly having to reset the roof, get the snow off the hides, prop up the roof. It was dripping as it melted. They were having a fire inside because you couldn't have a fire outside. Yeah, they just so had poor shelter. It was, it was very brutal. Um, conditions. Just, just brutal conditions. And they said that they had like a couple ox left and they were relying and then they just wandered off in the snow. And no one could find them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, eating an ox, you've got a lot of meat on an ox. That's mm -hmm. kind of one thing I... I, I kind of do the numbers in my head about, um, you know, what, what meat, how much meat does it keep to keep you alive? Right. And just going off, um, you know, when you go out to a restaurant and you have a steak, you know, you have an eight ounce steak. So if you had a pound of meat, I, that's enough protein to keep you alive. Now you don't have anything else. So you're going to be mal, you're not going to die of starvation, but you're going to be, you're going to have severe malnutrition, right? Mm -hmm. Cause you have no vegetables. You've got no fruit, so you're going to get scurvy or something or some of those other ailments will get you. But you're not going to starve to death. So if there's 87 people, they need 87 pounds of meat. They had dozens and dozens of ox and horses. All those animals weigh 500, 800, up to 1,000 pounds. A lot of them just were gone. It's not that they died and they got to I harvest know, them. I know, but I don't think they knew how to manage those correctly. If you, do you think if those were fur trappers? that this would have happened of guys that knew the outdoors and they knew, um, you know, how I'd to stretch I'd say these that. guys knew the outdoors pretty well by that point on the trail, yeah. but well, you it, know, you just can't. It's a quick learning curve. It's gone. Yeah. It's not like you can go find it once it's in the snow, you know? Well, I mean, it's a quick learning curve that you, you by the time you start learning lessons, you're already starving yourself. Yeah. And that's why, um, There's very the little room for error. They got there. By the time they got to Truckee, and we're going to, really, they went to Lake, you know, they were, they were at Donner Lake. 
but basically we're going to call it Truckee because it was also named Truckee Lake at that time. It wasn't renamed Donner Lake until uh, close to 1900 or something when they renamed it after the Donner Party. Mm -hmm. But it was real, originally called Truckee Lake. Um, Some of the women had buried money there that yeah, they found later. Yeah, they found uh, money stashed Coins. a long, long time. Because it was like, you have one chance to hike over to Auburn, or a couple chances. You know, sometimes people got up and had to come back, give it another go. Yeah, you want to talk about one? Of, okay, so talk about one of the parties. So, okay, so there, it's November 4th. It, it uh, They've been on the road since May 12th. All right. So long journey. Uh, yeah. I mean, May, uh, you know, June, July, August, September, October, November. So they, they have are a week short of six months on the trail. So they are now exhausted. Uh, Malnutri maybe injured, right? You Malnourished. know, we talk, we talk about someone going for a walk or, 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 you know, walking their dog in the park and they hurt their knee or twist an ankle. Can you imagine the injury of how beat up how your they shoulder were, were how, how your knee was, how your hip was, uh, Oh, so yeah. probably all sorts of injuries. There were no doctors with them. They never make mention of any physicians with them. So, uh, for instance, Donner, um, when they when they got when in early November when they were going to hunker down uh, for the snowstorm, Donner was out. The head Donner. I'm drawing a blank on his first name, but the the, yeah. the man who was in charge of the Donner party. Uh, he was the the father. He was 60 years old. Yeah, he was fifty nine or sixty. Um, he had in he had cut his hand when he was cutting wood and building. Right, he survived until the rescue, but his arm was so gangrene, he he died shortly afterwards. And I think they had to take his arm. Yeah, but from a cut, he he got gangrene because there was nothing to treat it by then. Yeah. So it it wasn't like you know when you look at when you hear about the Donner Party, it wasn't like hey, um, it wasn't Gilligan's. Island, right? It wasn't, hey, we're out for a three hour tour. It wasn't this group of people that had just started, they got snowed in, and everything went downhill. They were on the road for six months of brutality. Yeah. They were already just, they were done. Well, they were wiped I mean, out. Yeah. And then they had to hunker down. They weren't quite done. A lot of them weren't done. From November 4th until the middle of February. Yeah. So the first three and a half rescue months. party. Three and a half months in a dark, dungy, freezing cold cabin yeah. with no food. And you know what essentially, eating? what they ate a lot of, they ate the hides. Yeah. So I'm looking at you sitting there with your leather jacket on. <laughs> okay. And this is a good time to uh, talk about our attire today. I am not in a Tommy Bahama shirt today. Uh, because we were discussing the Donner Party, I thought it would be really nice to wear more of a dungaree type. Uh, Canvasy canvas shirt that uh, was was period for yeah eighteen forty six, and um, Jessica put on her leather jacket, and I read a ton of stuff about them eating the hides. They would and eat. boiling it down into a soup. And, so so your jacket's yeah. like dinner. We just oh you boil God. that jacket down, and the hides melt in. And they said it made it didn't make a soup. It made like a paste Ugh. and it had this awful odor, but it had caloric value. Mm -hmm. Okay, It had some properties in that would, would, and they ate that. And every hide, they said the, there was a, one instance where a little kid was sitting on a rug that they had put in. One of their hides was like a rug, you know, on the mud. And the little kid would, would take little pieces of it off on a stick roast it on the fire and eat so the little kid is eating the rug i mean that's, that's some crazy. viking stuff right there yeah that, that is that is barbaric. i mean i can't put myself in that position of being that hungry you know you you try to put yourself in the mindset especially reading the book of of the despair and the hope lost but like what they ha what was going through their head because a lot of them still survived so how can you be down that bad and still like, no, I'm going to get over that mountain. Out of 87, how many survived? Only 14, right? No. No. 39 died and uh, 48, right? 48, uh, yeah. 40, 48 lived and no. 39 died. So 
No, it had 48, to be more of that. No, no. 39 out of 87 died. In fact, there was, there was 48 survivors. So less than half died under these, under six months on the road and three and a half months trapped in a, in a snow cave. And 48 of them survived. There was 48. Wikipedia of 87 members, 48 survived. Look at that. I feel like. Pappy always knows the facts <laughs> on Pappy Hour, all right? I'm just thinking back to the book, like, I'm, so they originally, after spending three months in, you know, the cold and the despair, they had a rescue party come, come get them and it, bring them some supplies. Before that, 17 of them left. All right, so on December 17th, yeah, only Arrest, uh, um, five weeks after being trapped in the snow, mm -hmm. uh, 17 of them said, we're out of here. We're going to go up. I mean, they, they had a map. They knew where they were going. They just had to get up over the mountain and, and get there, right? Mm -hmm. So 17 of them left. Two turned back because they did not have snowshoes. One of the guys made 15 set, 15 pair of snowshoes. And two went without them, or three left without them, and two of them turned back. And then on the road, the guy who made the snowshoes made one more set. So they all had snowshoes. Mm -hmm. Of that group that left, now there was 15. There was 10 women. I'm sorry, 10 men and five women. Yeah. Two out of the 10 men survived. Eight died. And all five of the women lived. Yeah. So they went and I have uh, a quote seven, about seven out of them survived. They got all the way down to Sacramento. That's when the the two Indian guides were with them. So that was the first group to leave. That was that the survived. first that was the first group. Yeah. And they got it took them. Now again, anybody's been to Tahoe, uh, been skiing up at uh at Squaw or Alpine or or North Star. And you just kind of, you know, you've been out, you've covered that territory. Um, you've driven up Highway 80. Um, you know, you roll through, you roll through Sacramento. Before you know it, you're in Auburn. From Auburn um, to Truckee, it's about 50. From Auburn to Truckee, it's about 55 miles. Uh, 20, yeah, about 55, no more than 60 miles to Truckee. So it took them 33 days. 33 days camping in the snow there. oh camping in the snow looking for food they uh didn't they eat someone on that trek someone died and they, the men were dying and they were eating the men as they died that is correct yeah they were they were so here's a stat or a quote from um quote from the book overall yeah. donner party men died at nearly twice the rate of women 56% yes. of the males and 29% of the females they died much sooner, too. 14 Donner Party males died before the first female did. 14 died before the first female did. Um, and it was the men in their prime years who died earliest and in yes. the largest numbers. Of 21 men between the ages of 20 and 39, 66% died. Of 30 women in the same age group, only 14% died. So I, that's what I was thinking. 14 was that, that number, 14%. Yeah. So, that's a fa so this is a, a really fascinating look at survival rates between men and women. Yeah. Well, the reason why the men in their prime were dying is because they were doing a majority of the work of the of the physical labor. And carrying no fat. They were skinny, yeah. lean, lean and mean. But when you don't feed, you know, lean and mean is good when you feed the fire. But when you stop feeding the fire, you know what happens? It eats itself. Well, fire goes out. Yeah. Okay. So... It's that slow, it's the, it's the, um, slow it, metabolism who it, wins. It's the rabbit and the tortoise, the hare and the tortoise. So the males did all this hard work. You know, they were providing, right? So they were giving food to their children, giving food to their wife. Um, and they weren't, they weren't taking enough food in, but they were doing so much more work and, and burning just, so many more calories. Men just naturally have a higher metabolism than women. Women naturally hang on to more body fat. Yeah, um, keeps you alive. Yeah, good thing for us. Yes, if you were on the Donner Party, Jess, <laughs> would you be in that percentage? Could you survive that? I like to think that, you know, I have deep what it takes. I, I feel like everyone has what it takes to survive that type of situation. It's a human instinct to, to when it's life or death, you don't give up until 
you know. And let's parlay that into that you do have the roots of the Oregon Trail. I do? Yes, you do. Your, your mother and your grandmother, um, it goes from your mother's line to your grandmother's line. Uh, I believe to her mother's line. So this would be your great grandmother um, about three generations more. So I want to say it's your fifth or sixth generational line uh, came in the Oregon Trail. Came cool. over in the Oregon Trail. And she wrote, um, she's mentioned in the yeah, book. Yeah, she has some diaries, right? Yeah, the yeah. Oregon Trail diaries. Now, she came over in 1853. So 1853, now we're post gold rush. So there was a lot of people coming over. She hopped on the bandwagon. Yes. So um, I'd like to see the stats of how many came over in 1853, but I, I don't think it was 25,000. It was yeah. probably in the neighborhood of you know, five or 10 well, or that'll be a good read. 15,000. Yeah. And in a, another episode, um, we're, we're going to talk some more about some California history, um, probably picking this back up with the gold rush. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we're going to bring up, um, we're going to bring up some more on the Oregon Trail and your line on the Oregon Trail, 1853. But you, you're a direct descendant of an Oregon Trail survivor. I need to channel that energy um, next weekend when I run my first ultra marathon. So, which I'm extremely nervous for. So hopefully next episode, I can report back with positive news that it's completed. I didn't injure myself well, drastically, hang on, hang on. and let's, I let's, didn't have to get carted out from let's the hills this. of Catalina. So let's let's talk about why we're talking about the Donner Party, is because next weekend, Jessica uh, on January sixth, uh, this coming weekend, um, Jessica is going to embark on a fifty k uh, walk, run, crawl, whatever how you need to finish. Oh God. Uh, 50K, a little over 31 miles on the island of Catalina uh, from Avalon to circumnavigate that island and get back to Avalon 50 kilometers later. So we're it's putting making this, my heart race just talking about it. I can't believe it's already here. It's but so we're going to put but this is putting in perspective. So now I know. the Donner it Party, helps. 2,170 miles on the Oregon Trail, you can do 31 miles. I can do 31, 31 miles. miles. Gets a can of corn. I know. Can't corn. I can do that. 31 miles. The only problem is I've been training for this so long that I've put some good wear and tear in my body. So I'm definitely not my most health, most healthy self. And so I just hope that um, between the knees and the back and the hips that I don't do any long term. 31 miles. I know. I can get it done. I mean, it'll it, be fun. When you're when you're struggling, you're just going to reach down and pull a little bit of that Oregon Trail. A little bit of that Savage out. Oregon Trail out and say, you know what? Yeah. This is life or death. I have to make this. I know. Well, yeah. that's what I'm like. Okay, don't hurt yourself though. Like it's that fine balance between pushing myself into um realms that I have not yet wandered I mentally. Think gonna, I think you're gonna come but, back and you're gonna have like blood stains on you and I'm gonna be like, Jess, what's wrong? What you're happened like, out there? I killed a rabbit. I was hungry. <laughs> I made fire, I killed a rabbit, I cleaned it, and I ate it. I come I'm back here. Oh, like tw 24 hours later. I'm like, I did it, but... Uh, I did I, it. I, I had to kill a bison, and uh, I'm wrapped in the, the hide. I have the horns on my head. Walking in Viking style. No, I hope I see a bison, but I hope it doesn't, because that's what happens on Catalina. There's so many bison. Can I tell I you? I hope I see one, but I hope they don't block the road. If I was doing 50K, I would do it on the back of a bison. <laughs> Because Dad, you could do this I for sure. I wouldn't. You walk. just walk the whole thing. Yeah, it would take me a lot longer than a calendar day. I know, but it you could like do a, it. A, a, well, what what last Catalina event we did? How many miles? We did eighteen. We did, uh, yeah, like thirty or 20, 20 oh, or thirty. Oh no, we between did between the two. But that was multi day. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I will be channeling. No, no, we did twenty eight miles in three days. Yeah, you're doing thirty one miles in one day in eleven hours. All right. You got to do it in 11 hours. 11 hours. So. All right. So let's wrap up on the Donner Party. I'll be channeling getting, that, uh, how we uh, doing? that energy. Doing good? We there? Okay. So um, 48 out of 87 survived. Yeah. Um, just a couple things to touch off. They start. So uh, January, uh, end of January. No, no. First of February, the first um, rescue party gets there. Mm -hmm. Takes like half of them out. 
They send another party. So all the rescue party isn't coming from the east. It's all coming from Sacramento. It's coming from Sutter's Fort. Yeah. And they're uh, they're making uh, parties up there, bringing supplies up. And they were they were smart about rescuing. They didn't carry everything with them. They left stores of stuff, again, supply chain, leaving that. So if they had to retreat back, and then when they were bringing the party back, let's say they walked 20 miles, they yeah. would be at supplies. Yeah. And 20 more miles, they'd be at more supplies. So these weren't, this wasn't all these guys' first rodeo, but it was an honor's first rodeo. Yeah. And that's what got them into trouble. Um, okay, just a but couple a lot crazy of the, stats A lot here. of the women survived, and one of them settled in Almaden, where we... Where we grew she up. She settled in San Jose. But then she lived in Almaden, the hills of Almaden. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's right. That was in the book. She lived where they were in, in New Almaden. In New Almaden. Wow. That's that's pretty crazy. A female donor. Or maybe it was a read, but of the party. Okay. Um, the three... Oh, I had 300 written down. It was 300 miles from Springfield. Yeah. So they really they really did over 2,000 miles. Yeah. Um, okay, so... One of the families of the Donner were the Reed family. Mm -hmm. And Reed was a well-known um, name in San Jose. They owned a sporting goods store for a long, long time. One of the main sporting goods before there were chain sporting goods stores. And the grandson of that uh, works for the police department um, in the Bay Area. Oh, and cool. He's a friend of mine. So I believe it's the same. Um, I'd love to reach out to him and see if it was the same family. But the Reeds settled in San Jose along with two of the Donner girls because they were orphaned. Oh. Yeah, so two Donner, the Reeds raised two yeah. uh, Donner girls. Okay, also the last surviving, I pulled that up, last survivor of the Donner party was Isabella Breen. She died March 25th, 1935 in San Francisco at 90 years old. Wow. She was just one, she was a one-year-old. Yeah, one-year-old, one one to two years old during that. Man, imagine being a mother and getting your baby through that. That is crazy. Uh, Oregon Trail, my last little stat there, Oregon Trail. How did it come about? It was mapped starting in 1811 by fur traders and trappers. So from 1811 to the mid-30s, it was j basically Carved an out. Indian route following rivers, because you always followed your water source, and the trappers and... Uh, just traders and trappers use that Oregon Trail. Yeah, who knew the land and knew where you wanted to kind of go along. So just a fascinating uh, a time of history, a little block of uh, some yeah. statistics about that. Uh, and I think uh, on the next episode, we're going to pick up on the gold rush. So just uh, two years later yeah, and talk about kind of the other side of the Sierras and the gold rush and um, kind of what it did for California. And we're going to go down that path and we're going to talk a little bit about your your path on the Oregon Trail and bring that together. Not my path. But your, your history. Okay, so I have another, just to end a quote that um, from the book that said, occurred to me that any one of the 16 wheelers racing by on the interstate could have carried all of the Donner Party over the crest of the mountain in about seven minutes. Um. But yeah, it was just such a such a wonderful book. Over that route in se could it, one semi that just rolls 24-7, semi's going over there. One semi from Truckee up and over seven minutes. Yeah. But yeah, just an incredible story of human resilience and resolve. And I really, really recommend this book to anyone who's interested in the subject. Um, the most fascinating tragedy. Tra I cannot say that word right. Fascinating tragedy um one of the most of american history so really good i'm glad we got to talk about it and i'll be channeling that energy this coming weekend in my uh my physical feet but you know right. the mental the, if the mind is strong enough the mind tells the body what to do so hopefully my body will listen this wraps up episode nine of pappy hour we want to give another shout out to our our great producing producer tristan foster whoop, whoop. Um, as well as our favorite charity Tunnel to Towers, building houses for great uh, men and women of this country. Um, and have a great new year, 2024. It's going to be a great year. Shout out Sierra Nevada. Sponsor us. <laughs> yep. Happy New Year, everyone.